Thank you, David. That was an excellent summary of a big subject, as you said. Our next speaker is Dr. Elizabeth Carey, who is going to be uh, uh, giving us an update on cholestatic and autoimmune conditions. Dr. Carey has strong research interest in those areas. She's also the director of our Transplant Hepatology Fellowship, uh, which David is a graduate of. And finally, I'll just share this fun fact. Dr. Carey and I, 20 years ago, I cannot believe this, uh, spent the first night Mayo Clinic Hospital opened on call. We, we were on call the opening night for Mayo Clinic Hospital, so that's really dating myself. Yeah, that's true. I've been here for 20 years. Unlike Dr. Byrne, I didn't go away for fellowship, so I've been doing the same drive to work for 20 years, which is kind of sad. Um, I'm really just talking about the cholestatic liver diseases. I know the title included autoimmune. There are really no significant updates in the autoimmune hepatitis. I'm more than happy to take questions um, during the panel or afterwards if you have any specific questions, but this will focus on the cholestatic liver diseases. These are my disclosures. And before we get started, we need to review bile acid metabolism. This is from the New Yorker that describes that bile exits the gallbladder, passes through the cystic duct, gets released into the intestines, and ultimately winds up on the internet. <laughs> I think we can all agree that bile on the internet doesn't help any of us, so we will talk about the management here. So we have a desperate need for new treatments for PBC and PSC. The prevalence of PBC is about 40 per 100,000 people in the United States, and 40% of these patients do not have a biochemical response to URSO. PSC has a slightly lower prevalence. It's 27 per 100,000 people, but it's a more aggressive disease, and the median transplant-free survival time after diagnosis is only about 10 to 12 years. Um, as you probably know, there's no medical therapy right now for PSC. We have URSO for PBC. It definitely decreases the rate of progression, especially if it started when the disease is in an early stage, but it's most definitely not a cure. So I put some cases in. Just in the interest of time, I'm not going to use the audience response system. Just um, think about it <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, make a decision in your head. So the first case is a 58-year-old woman. She was diagnosed with PBC eight years ago. She has been on the appropriate weight-based dose of Urso with good medication adherence. She complains of mild fatigue. She does not have any significant pruritus. Her transient elastography suggests stage 2 fibrosis. And these are her numbers. AST, ALT, mildly elevated. ALK is 225, and her total bilirubin is normal at 1. So what's the next best step for her? To start a betacolic acid at 5 milligrams daily, to start phenofibrate at 160 milligrams daily, to start sertraline at 50 milligrams daily, methotrexate at 2.5 milligrams or 8.